Phineas and Ferb the movie, Across the Second Dimension. Phineas and Ferb are now starring in a Disney Channel original movie, and all it takes to set the movie off is converging the A and B plots as the inciting incident instead of the resolution. When they help Doof fix his other Dimensionator, they find a dimension where an eviler Doof has already taken over the Tri-State area. Perry, meanwhile, is desperate to keep his secret life from the boys so he won't have to be relocated, but the only thing more important to him than staying with the boys is keeping them safe. Phineas feels betrayed when he learns the truth about Perry, but they have to work together to find their way back to their own dimension. Candace, meanwhile, finds herself eager to grow up, until she meets a version of herself who had to grow up too early, and it gets a little heavy for an animated decom, and I really, really love it. The movie strikes the perfect balance of being accessible to a first-time viewer, but rewarding for fans who have seen every episode. Peppered throughout the movie are both explicit callbacks and more subtle bits of world-building, like the fact that the Resistance layer under Isabella's house is converted from Pinky's hideout. And it's a nice treat to actually get to see the dimensions that the baby alien, the giant floating baby head, and Candace's hallucinatory zebra come from. Man, this sequence must have been so much fun to board. And of course, there are some fun references to the world outside of the show, too. Get me! I'm a George O'Keefe painting! Well, why don't you ask it, Kierkegaard? What? Existentialist trading cards! They came with the gum! But even with all the callbacks, the broad story beats and the characters are explained clearly enough that you understand all the stakes even if you haven't spent the past two seasons with these characters. But if you do know the show well, man, that climax is really satisfying. And for me, the most satisfying beat of all is Candace knowing how to use her own bad luck to save the day. I'm gonna bust my brothers to my mom, and I'm gonna fail! See, if only she remembered later that weaponizing bad luck was an option, she probably would have been a lot nicer to Milo. And yeah, because the series wasn't ending yet, everything had to go back to normal, so the characters had to forget about the most exciting thing that ever happened to them. But they managed to do that in a meaningful and emotional way. And it's nice that the show later gave us a follow-up with the characters who didn't forget about this adventure. At the start of the series, one of the core running gags was how Phineas and Ferb's plot and Perry the Platypus's plot don't have anything to do with each other until they intersect at the end. So it's really nice knowing that all this time, Perry was paying attention and he really did care. So even though Phineas and Ferb don't remember, it's nice that Perry will never forget the best day of his life. The day that he finally got to team up with his best friends. And the movie features some of the catchiest songs from the entire run of the series. And you know what a high bar that is to clear. Even the deleted song is one of the catchiest ever written. Oh, and don't forget about the Slash music video. Unless you're watching one of the cuts that doesn't have the Slash music video at the end, in which case, I'm sorry. 